This morning I'm going to show you the motor drive of the solar tracking parabolic collector. I'll start here in the motor box and you can see we have a 12 volt DC gear motor uh, terminal strip with a couple of uh, terminals here for the motor uh, a support made up of, uh, of uh, I don't know what you call this stuff, brackets and a spider arrangement for the um, for the um, coupling and also the uh, changing of the half inch size to the to the uh, output size of the motor. I forget what it is right now. Uh, coming down this way, um, we have uh, an arm, a channel arm, uh, which has a, a, a nut in it here. I'll show you that in a moment. And it pivots on this shaft, which is actually the same point as the focal line. You know, I'll talk about the focal line here in a second. But essentially what the arm does is mimic the motion of the uh, of one of the solar collectors. I've done it here in paper just so I can show you here what it looks like as it spins around um, in my little simulation here and the uh, motor drive arm exactly mimics that rotation of that uh, uh, drive arm here as it swings back and forth 50 degrees. I've uh, taken the screws out just to take this top off to show you what's in here. Um, this one's actually been working outside for five years, so you'll pardon the odd bit of rust here and there. This does work. Um, there's a couple of bearings on a shaft here, um, like so. You can see the other one in there, and what these do is allow the, uh, and a flat washer, and these allow the, uh, as the nut travels back and forth, this arm, of course, is going to be pushed from side to side. So that's the way that goes together. Attach 12 volts to the motor drive now for my variable power supply. And you can see that the motor starts to turn and thus turning the shaft. And if we go down here, you'll see how quickly it's moving. Extremely slowly. In fact, it's going to take about 10 minutes to get from end to end. Now what I've set up here on the bench is a kind of paper simulation to show you the position of uh, two example uh, reflectors here spaced 24 inches or 61 centimeters apart and I'm going to show you what happens as the motor drive goes from end to end. So here we are entirely at one end, so they call this east and uh, you can see all the arms are hard over to one end. Um, at the motor drive itself you can see that uh, the arm is about as far as it's going to go here. It actually goes a little further before it crashes into that uh, uh, wooden block there. Here we've gone about as far as we can go with that arm. Um, pardon my paper uh, uh, concept model here, but uh, that does work in real physical terms. And the other thing you can see starting to happen is if this goes much further, this reflector is actually going to collide with the uh, control rod. So we can't go much further than 50 degrees. Here we are at the other end, call it uh, west, and uh, you can see the uh, reflectors are healed over all the other way, uh, all the way the other way. Um, if we go over and have a look, um, you'll see that uh, the uh, uh, arm would collide with the screw if we were to go much further. Uh, we're getting close to the control rod with the reflectors and uh, that's 50 degrees 
to this side, to the west side. Surface. It's not touching. Me. 